got asked a question the other day that I really thought about, and um, you know, the theme of my talk, and I'll be talking at the next one, and I think what I'll do next time is just take one of my deals and break it down so you guys can actually see, like, where did I get the money, um, where did I get the deal, how did all that stuff work, I can get into that next time. Um, but I started, like you said, been a teacher, high school teacher for 24 years, have a million kids. Um, I basically started in 2014. I had $600,000 of debt. Um, didn't know that number. That's a long story how I got into that. Um, all these kids. Uh, I've been a teen mom, teen mother, lived in my car, homeless, almost two years, welfare recipient. Um, been through a divorce, lost my shirt because of it, uh, lost both my parents pretty early, raised my younger siblings, lost my house in the market crash in 08. Uh, after that happened, my credit score went down to 420, didn't know that was possible, all that debt. Um, and I basically lived by going to payday loans and trying to manage those, but I realized at a certain point that there's only so deep you can go with the underworld of financing. So um, then I got into even more trouble, and I didn't know that was possible. Just trying to keep afloat, pay soccer fees and cheer fees and keep the roof over our head and keep eating and that kind of stuff. Um, I'll go into this next time, but I basically uh, became a real estate agent in 2014 and got my first deal actually in 2015. Um, but I started my first deal, and that's what I want you guys to know. And definitely take a minute and follow me on The Mom That Flips. Um, follow everybody that you heard here today because I just feel really grateful that I get to hang around these type of people that bring so much value. Um, you guys really, and I also want to give you guys a high five for being the people that got out of bed this morning on a Saturday morning and came here because that is different than a lot of people, right? The other people that signed up for a ticket went, ugh, it's Saturday morning, right? Yeah. I'll just sleep a little longer, whatever. So you took a step that was above those people. So if you did nothing else today, Definitely give yourself a high five for doing that. Um, this is something I very much believe in. It's not about your resources, because I got my first house to flip with zero dollars, actually negative a whole lot of dollars. Got my first, didn't know anybody, didn't have anybody giving me a hand up, nobody. So I honestly, I'm at the point in my life, I don't hear excuses from people. People come up and tell me blah, 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 their story about why they can't you know, do what I'm doing or all these things that have happened. I've pretty much been through it all, except, knock on wood, anything happening to my kids. But I've been through all the financial loss and all, all that kind of stuff. So I just am at a point where, you know, if you want it bad enough, you'll do it. So the question I got asked this week, which I was like, so how many of you guys have kids? Raise your hand if you have kids. All right. So if somebody told you that unless you raise $100,000 in the next 30 days, you're going to die and you're gonna leave those kids. Are you going to find, I want you guys to tell me, where would you, where would you start looking for 100 grand? Where would you get it? Uh, under the mattress, Christian, he could loan you. What else? Where are you gonna find $100,000 if you're going to die in the next 30 days? I'm not leaving my kids. I'll rob people, I'll go on Facebook where I found my first deal and the money. I'll do whatever I need to do because I'm not leaving my kids. So that question really shifted my thought process because people will be motivated for that, right? But I took that same motivation and I put that into getting us out of debt, building our house, paying things off. That there's a lot of, I'll go through all this next time, but I work full time. I've only not been working full time for the last year and a half. So the whole time that I built my business, a real estate agent, now with the XP, building a team, Working a full-time job in special ed. Kids are, I loved all the kids. It's a very taxing job, right? Kids with a lot of needs all day, every day. You come home, you do not want to do that. But that's how deep the drive was in me to shift that, was I did not want to be doing that anymore. I, I feel bad for leaving the kids a little bit, <laughs> but it's my life. It's my time on this earth. So I need to do what I'm going to do what's best for my family. I want to hang out with my kids uh, sometimes. No, I'm kidding. Um, but I have a time job. So the people that tell me I got no time, yeah, you do. You just don't care enough about it to do anything. That's the truth. Um, it, this is very simple. What all of us do is actually pretty simple, like in, in its own way. Like I just 
find a house to buy, I fix it, and I sell it. That's all I do. Even as this market shifts, there's opportunity everywhere. Ten years ago, before I started doing this, if you would have told me when the, you know, when the market shifts, um, you know, there's so much opportunity, I would say, no. When it's not good, the party's over. But that is not true. Now I'm like, yes. The only thing I'm a little stressed about, to be honest, is I bought a couple houses before the market really shifted and some things happened, right? I got caught by the city and a lot of some things happened that delayed me being able to sell those houses in a timely, you know, a little more timely manner than I wanted. But there's three of them. My worst case scenario, because I did plan really well at that time, was I'll probably break even. That's my worst case scenario. If I lose my shirt, that means something horrible has happened. So, or I refine, I rent it out. Got to have multiple exit strategies like Christian talks about. Um, bad credit, no money, it does not matter. Money is in your mind. Money is, I used to sit in the audience and hear, like, um, if you find a deal, the money will come. And I would think, they are crazy, dude. I'm going to the grocery store praying my card's going to work. And you're going to tell me that I'm going to, the money's just going to appear like magic? It's not. That was my thought process. So that is not true, right? The mo but I found out later it is true. You find a deal, the value's in the deal. The value's in me. It's not in money. Money does show up when you have a deal. Another thing, and everything that I'm talking about, I always have to keep leveling up. I always have to keep leveling, leveling up my mindset. I, can, I don't even think about it. Honestly, I don't really go much to the houses anymore because I paid somebody to do to do that because I didn't want to go to the house anymore. I'll stop by and look at them and stuff, but I'm not in the day-to-day -day grind like I used to be. So when I'm at that level, I think, what else can I do? I want to buy a lot of multifamilies. Where am I getting, you know, I just made an offer on 30 some units for $8 million. Where am I getting the $8 million? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know, but I will find it. If I get a solid deal that has value in it, somebody's going to want to get that money. So it's always about leveling up. Um, you got you to gotta find a network. I used to hear that and I think, your network is your network. <laughs> but it's the truth. I hang around these guys. We're constantly talking every day, all day, in this chat, blah, 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 all day. But you know, they, it's like million dollar conversations. If I'm like, hey, Christian, where am I getting the money for this? Oh, we'll try this, this, or this. Then I can dream because I have somebody I can ask the next question to. Right? And also Chatty, that was huge for me actually. Chatty, who spoke earlier, the questions that he said, that is the key to shifting. Because when I was super broke, didn't even know what I was doing, I, I sat and I was pregnant on bed rest and I sat in bed and I started asking myself questions. But I didn't know that's what I was doing. I just said, what did you ever want to be? This can't be your life. You can't be 40 almost 41, having 50,000 kids, and not be able to give them any money to do the things I really want to provide for them. This can't be your life. So what did you ever want to be? Let's go back to the beginning. Um, so properties to flip are everywhere. Don't listen to people that say, you can't buy a house right now, there's no, there's no properties, there's no nothing to, no deals to find, deals are everywhere. Drive in your car down the street and find the ugly house. Information's everywhere. Go online and sign up for a service to figure out how to connect directly with the sellers. Everything is available for you. The biggest thing to change is your mind, period. They, that's the only thing I did. My money didn't change. My time didn't change. I just changed my mind that I was gonna pay off all that debt. I was going to be able to buy groceries Without having a panic attack, I was going to be embarrassed when my card got declined. So that's it. Change your mind. I was on a show on HGTV with uh, Tarek El Musa, if you know him. Um, when I used to go and pay my payday loans every month, I'd go around the, you know, we, we'd start from the farthest out, you know, got paid once a month. By the end of the first day, my money was gone for the month. That sucks, especially when you have to go to a job that you hate. So I'd pay my rent, pay my basics. Then I'd pay my payday loans, and then I was done. So we made it kind of bearable or fun. We take the babies, load them in the car seats, get 7-Eleven, so they would uh, pass out on the Slurpee, sugar, <laughs> taking a nap. 
And, um, and we go pay all the loans. When we come back, we'd watch Pull Up or Flop. That was our big thing to do. It was a new show back then. And the day I actually walked into the house where I was the one doing the show with Tarek, instead of watching him on TV and going, wow, that's me. Like, what? How did this happen? Like, just that evolution. That was the first day that I realized I had made a lot of mindset shifts. I had done a certain amount of work just to get to this point. And then I met him and I was like, he's just a guy like I'm, I'm a person. He's just a normal dude. This is Michael, Michael Phelps is the guy in the black hat. If you know Michael Phelps, Olympic swimmer. This is huge for me because this guy lost, the guy in the green cap lost by like less than a second, but he spent most of the time watching Michael. Imagine if he had just looked ahead and ran his own race. That's all I do. I don't compare myself to people because time is short, man. I, I, we went to a EXP con, me and Christian last week, it was awesome. And this one lady said something that really stuck in my mind. She said, I will start caring about your opinion when I can deposit it in my bank account. And so looking at other people, um, don't, don't do it. Just look ahead, what can you do? Lots of lessons I've learned. Real question to me is how bad do you want it? I, you can, money is everywhere, deals are everywhere. I know you're probably sitting there going, but how, right? It's Google it, that's what I did. How do I buy a house with no money? How do I flip a house with no money? Where do I find deals to buy? That's literally all I did because I didn't have anybody. I didn't have a coach. It's really about your mindset. If I could translate anything, I would say that has to be the one thing that I translate or I hope to translate to people as I talk more and do more events and build a team. How bad do you want it? The answers are there. So um, it is totally possible. There is so many people um, online that want to give you money, that want to get it on deals. Even if you don't know what you're doing, these are the perfect places to be.